Hadassah has asked us all to document our stories. For posterity, you know. It seems like a fine idea. So, hi. I am Kesha McDermott. When the bombs fell, I was in Watoka, coordinating a statewide science fair for that year's high school kids. And the theme was the future of energy. After the bombs, everything was pretty chaotic. Scavenging for food and fighting off rabid survivors. Oh, it was just a bad time all around. I found a couple of surviving kids from the high school whose parents didn't make it. And we holed up in a house in town for a while. After a bit, I was able to solder the circuitry in an old radio, and we tuned in to a broadcast from the responders. Oh, we were overjoyed. The trip from Watoka to Flatwoods. It was rough, mind you. The kids and I ran into a group of assholes in the mountains who stole our food and water. I can't tell you how happy I was to find the responders in Flatwoods. Tents for everyone, open kitchens, medical supplies, protection. <laughs> we were safe. They had a problem, though. Their water sources were contaminated heavily. People were boiling water, but not long enough to make it safe. So, I stepped up and I said, I'll build a testing kit to monitor the contamination and I will teach folks how to properly boil water. <laughs> and I did. The world is getting better, but slowly. We need to make sure it doesn't relapse too. It's going to take time and care, that's all. Well, time, care, and science.
Reverend Delbert Winters here, born and raised in this very town. Met my own church to the responders for their outpost here, and uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see, helping folks through thick and thin till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most, it was time. This was the end, but, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake, that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to have been thought. So I asked I asked how. Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I ready to fight them up there by your side. Then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. It seemed obvious. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But till then, let's share a home meal together, all right? Guardian a girl could have. my first interview with another survivor, Kesha McDermott. She found me trying to break into a Nuka-Cola machine and um, showed me a different way. So, Kesha, can you tell us a bit about how we can make sure our water is safe for drinking? I'll try to keep it to the basics for training purposes. Oh, it's not complicated, really. Find water and strain out any big particles and chunks. Then, boil it in a pot over an open fire for a minute or two, then let it cool. Should be fine. Like, <laughs> like making tea, right? <laughs> uh-huh. You joined the responders a while ago and helped develop a program to train volunteers. So, uh, were you a survivalist prior to all of this? <laughs> you could say that. I taught high school kids. I used to talk about this very thing to them. Practical application of the sciences. It's fascinating, but... You never realize how important some things will be down the road, do you? I guess not. So if we were students of yours, what would you tell us about the world now? How can we survive? That's a good question, Dasa. Well, I would tell you all to remain calm and focus on surviving. The first thing you need to do is get yourself some clean drinking water. It's likely all you'll find is dirty water, but that's okay. We can fix it. Dirty water carries a small chance of disease and it's a bit radioactive. You'll probably survive if you drink it, but you shouldn't take that risk. 
It's better than toxic water or nuclear waste, though, which are both very harmful and should be boiled thoroughly first. Got that, Dutha? Yes, um. Contaminated water should be boiled. Okay. That sounds easy enough. So, boiled water is safe? It's mostly safe, but still a bit radioactive. What you really want is purified water. Oh, purified water. Okay, how do I get that? You can build machines that will do it for you, and that's the most reliable way. Building them requires some space and time and plenty of materials. But, on my way up here from Watoga, I found purified water occasionally in supply caches and medical kits. <laughs> so, keep your eyes peeled. If I boil water, and that's mostly safe, aside from a teensy bit of radiation, what about tea? Most folks around here are tea drinkers, as you know. I recall many a night sipping tea on the stoop, watching lightning bugs, and reading a book in peace and quiet. Tell me that's still okay, Kesha? Oh, bless your heart. It's probably as good as boiled water anyway. Maybe even better if you add anything medicinal to it. Some survivors add all sorts of flowers and herbs to boiled water, and they swear by it. Personally, I stick with purified water. Yeah, to each their own. Hmm, okay, got it. Uh, switching tracks a bit. I know you're awfully busy with your latest research in Flatwoods. Can you explain that a bit? <laughs> of course! I'm testing local, natural water over time in Appalachia. Gathering data, monitoring the radiation and contamination levels, and all of that. I analyze the data in my lab to look for long-term trends and use those trends to determine how we can use the water right now. We use the water for more than just drinking, you know. It feeds our plants, which feed our animals, so we need to know how things are changing. You got a lot of work cut out for you. I'm glad you joined the responders. Data sounds invaluable. <laughs> it is. I've integrated the data collection and research into the Responder Survivors Volunteer Program as well. I am still a teacher, after all. Wow. Then there you have it, folks. Thanks for talking with us today, Kesha. And thanks for showing us all how to live a little safer. <laughs> Class dismissed.
Hi there.
years since I did one of these. Dasa said she lost my original one, though. Bummer. My name is Colonel, so... Hey. Hi. Uh, let's see. Um, bombs fell when I was a kid. My dad died in the war, you know. So, this is all pretty normal. My story is, I guess... Boring. Uh, so, Dasa found me when I was 13 or so. She brought me the responders. They taught me everything. I became a volunteer. It was great. For the past five years, I've been a responder myself. I help kids who lost their families. Get them safe. Trained. Just act like a big brother. Every year we find fewer people, though, so... I don't know. Things are not good out there. Just... Just getting simple food and water is tough. And the Brotherhood. Well, we thought that would be different. We thought everything would be different, though. Uh, well, so anyway, maybe in ten years, Dasa will ask me to do another one of these Good survivor stories. <laughs> no enemy. Till then, uh, peace out, Blood! Uh, Holy man! Claim me. Target. Gathering all sources of nutrients. Listening is the key to life. Gotta focus. Oh, thought I heard someone creeping around. Yeah, you, you can't see my codes. Uh, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, not sure I got time for you, pal. Sorry.
Project, Project John works hey friend, all night. Can I get you also anything? Works all day. Yes, I am good at my job. Thank you for asking. But no. Hello there, stranger. Where'd you come ambling in from? One of those vault dwellers, are you? I've heard tell of your kind. Solved a lot of problems. And caused a lot of problems, from what I hear. You wouldn't happen to be one of the problem-solving kind, would you? I could use one, one of those right about now. Ridge caravan route set up this way. Oh, excuse me. Let me introduce myself. Name's Lane Platt. I'm with the Responders. We're a band of self-titled do-gooders around these parts. Appalachia's filling up fast, and we're trying to keep everyone hale and healthy and off each other's throats. You don't say? Uh, then you won't be averse to helping out, will you? Now, there's a lot going on in this neck of the woods. More than I can tackle myself. You got ferocious beasts roaming the forest, creepy cult moving into the caves, and all manner of people about ready to go to war with one another. All that is to say, I could use a hand, and I'd be willing to pay you for yours. What do you think? I wish that brother share with everyone the rest of us. It could benefit so many. Why, that is just terrific. Thank you a thousand times over. Now, what business do I have for you today? We aren't the only ones moving into the forest. We got some new neighbors, and I would like to keep on their good side. We have some supplies, bandages, a little food, that you can whip up into a little care package for them. Do that for me, and you'll earn your reward. If you want a safe haven, go to our headquarters in the refuge. In the, the Raiders from up in the crater. They're pushing into the region, and I don't want to be on their bad side. Call it appeasement, but I'll do anything I can do to keep them from going to war with our settlement. Thank you. See that it's delivered safely. You should find everything you need for that care package at our little abode here. Someone in need out there. Trees, blood, lumberjack, protect drawn. Here to volunteer? Or just to escape for a while? Product. Why does everyone still small? Have to come together to survive. Responder's job is never done. If you're looking for work, talk Whoa. to Lane. Oh, I'll have something for you to do. Sorry. Not here for homemade poultices, I hope. We are fresh out. I'm the quartermaster at this little outpost of ours. That means I manage what supplies we have. I uh, count them a lot. Just to make sure we're still out of gauze and didn't magically manifest more while I wasn't looking. I wanted to be a doctor, but being a doctor is hard when you have a fear of blood. And needles. And a failure. They're great. We're great. They more than me. They're selfless and fearless and try to solve any problem, no matter how difficult. And they, uh, use a lot of supplies and don't get many, but, uh, they manage anyway. <laughs> we'll 
Me? <laughs> I have nothing special. Oh no, I'm no Appalachian. I came in from the north with Paige and the other settlers at Foundation. Do you know them? But I, I wanted to do more than just settle. I wanted to learn medicine. And the responders seemed like they could teach me. Only uh, they couldn't. Or I couldn't learn is more like it. Huh, free time? That's not a real thing, is it? Stressed? <laughs> Who's stressed? Me? It's... Uh, that obvious, huh? Uh, well, I, I do have my mantras to calm me down. Serenity. Serenity. Peace. And... Wait, was it six bottled waters or sixteen in the next shipment? <laughs> you really think so? I'm not sure I believe you, but it's a sweet thing to say, nonetheless. Weren't we supposed to get a Blue Ridge Caravan route set up this way? Well, that's probably for the best. Okay then, I'll be here. Probably forever. Uh, don't suppose you can set a broken leg. Lumberjack. Protectron cuts down trees, but does not require punch or laboratory facilities. Settlers are going through. Uh, brush up on my first aid. A responder's job is never done. Lumberjack Protectron does not want to lose Lumberjack job to The refuge is holding up without me. Labor. How are you holding up? 